सो हाई गाइज वेलकम टू प्लेसमेंट्स रेडी टूडेज प्रॉब्लम इज फाइंड प्राइम नंबर इन अ रेंज बट बिफोर मूविंग ऑन टू द प्रॉब्लम इफ यू हैवेंट सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब दैट रियली मोटिवेट्स मी टू क्रिएट सच अमेजिंग कंटेंट राइट सो द प्रॉब्लम इज वी आर गिवन टू इन टीचर्स एम एंड एन वी हैव टू जनरेट ऑल प्राइम्स बिटवीन एम एंड एन राइट सो हेयर इन द एग्जाम्पल इनपुट यू कैन सी द वैल्यू ऑफ एम इज वन एंड एन इज टेन so the prime numbers in between 1 and 10 is 2 3 5 7 so we have to return the output containing the prime numbers between m and n okay similarly if you take the example as m equal to 2 and n equal to 5 the prime numbers in between 2 and 5 is 2 3 5 right so if you see the expected time complexity for this problem is given as n into square root of n and n can range up to 10 power 6 okay so let's understand this problem in more detail and let's also discuss the variations of this problem so that you could get better understanding so here as mentioned m and n can lie up to 10 to the power 6 right so that is fine but the problem also states us that expected time complexity should be big of n into sqrt of n right so what we can do here we can start our iteration from m till n right and we can check for a given i if it is prime then we will push it into our answer vector otherwise we will skip it okay now the problem is how to find that a given number is prime or not okay so if you basically observe prime number has only two factors one and the number itself right so if i take a example of some number which is not prime let's say 9 right so what are the factors of 9 9 has factors as 1 3 and 9 right so if you observe the number is getting divided by square root of itself right so the basic technique to check whether a number is prime or not is that you can iterate from i equal to 1 till i less than equal to the number itself and i plus plus right and then you can check if n is divisible by any of the i right in between this so you can take a count variable and you can increment your count and finally you can check if count is equal to equal to 2 which means that number is having only two factors 1 and n right so in that case it will be a prime but the problem demands us that we have to do this operation in square root of n time so we can also do this by running our i till square root of n right so how we will check so if you observe for any number which is not prime it must be getting divided by a number which is less than equal to its square root right so if if i write the factors of 18 so it is 1 2 3 6 9 18 and right and square root of 18 is we can say as 4 if we take the integer part so if you observe till less than 4 it is getting divided by three numbers right so it is definitely not a prime similarly if you take a example of 17 which is a prime so square root of 4, 17 is again 4 right but 17 has only two factors 1 and 17 so till 4 only one number is getting is able to divide 17 right so we can run our i loop till square root of n and in th that way if any n i divides n then we can simply return false in that case which means that is not a prime then only it is getting divided by a number which is less than equal to square root of n that is fine so in that way we can check for a prime right so that is fine so the complexity for this will be n into square root of n basically the loop will be running from i equal to m to n 
which in worst case will be equal to n right and uh, for checking it whether it is prime or not it will be taking square root of n time but what if n is very large right if n is very large we can use the concept of sieve right or we can have a concept of because we here we are having a range right m to n so in that case we can also use a concept of segmented sieve but they also comes up with a constraint and if you want to know about more about sieve and segmented sieve please write down in comments i will make a video on this separately right but for this problem the complexity of n into square root of n is sufficient right so i hope you have got the understanding as well as the explanation part let's move on to the coding implementation so here you can observe that i have taken an answer vector because we need to return a vector of int then we can run a loop from i equal to m to n because we want the prime in the range of m to n right then we will check if it is prime if it is prime right then we will push it into our answer vector and finally we can return our answer now the bullish prime function goes like this so if n is less than equal to 1 we can surely return false right and now we will run our loop from i equal to 2 till square root of n as discussed i plus plus and if any of i divides n that means n has a third factor apart from 1 and n itself then we in that case we are going to return false and if we come out of this loop we can return true in the last so i hope you have got the explanation as well as the coding implementation for this problem just in case if you have liked please like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you get more such amazing content thanks for watching